Okay, so here we are with the Roland System 1 M, I should say. Um, so I'm just going to do a real quick video about this synth. Um, just got the Octatrack just sitting down here. Uh, that's how I'm controlling it. Uh, and I'm just going to sort of build a sound. I'm probably not going to talk heaps, I'm just going to build the sound and then uh, I guess I'll point some things out as I go. Um, but yeah, let's do it. So, I've got, just got a basic initialize patch here. Might actually just turn it up slightly. Um, so, right while we're just on this saw wave, I'm just gonna just sort of demonstrate the filter real quick. So it's really smooth. Um, I cannot detect any stepping whatsoever. Uh, definitely one of the nicest digital filters I've heard. Like there are plenty of digital synths that have really nice uh, non-steppy filters. Uh, but I just feel like in terms of aliasing and stuff, it's just really minimal. I, I guess it's there, really high frequencies, but it's, it's something which I barely notice. Um, yes, I can tell it's a digital synth, but I don't care. I guess, that, I guess that's what, what I'm getting at, like, same with, like, the mono machine and stuff, like, I just like the sound of the filters on that, and, it, yeah, it's digital, it sounds digital as hell, but it doesn't matter, um, so, I don't think this sounds digital as hell, I think this sounds quite analog, actually, but, anyway, let's move on, so, uh, we've got all of these wave types, there is actually a second bank of them, uh, I'm not gonna really just sort of demonstrate all of them or anything, because there are plenty of videos that do that. I'm just going to build a sound, um, and I'm probably not going to talk for a bit. I'm not even sure what sort of sound it is going to be yet. I'm just going to go. So, here I go. So I'm actually just going to start a real quick pattern um, on the uh, the Octatrack, just to kind of, um, I don't know, just to uh, make things a bit easier for myself. So let's go here, and then 
Let's listen to this. How does this sound? There we go. So bear with me. So one thing I'm going to demonstrate right just real quick is this tone knob. Easily one of the most important features of this synth, especially in terms of making it sound um, analog, but making it sound analog and tailoring it to a specific kind of synth. So it's basically just an EQ knob effectively, but if you turn it down, like listen to this. It's even distorting a little bit because I actually got it going through the octa track, so I might uh, just have a quick look at that and turn off the um, compressor and see how we go. So you can hear that bass. And if I turn it the other way, it gets really sharp. Um, and sort of fizzy and so <clears throat> this is handy especially when I if I change the filter resonance and uh, make the filter envelope do something so let's just have a quick listen to let's have a try with that So you can hear what I mean, it, you can kind of go from something as thick and bassy as like some sort of Moog, I guess, or, I mean, you know, don't comment on my fucking video saying like, it's never gonna be as bassy as a fucking Moog, Mini Moogs are the best, like, yeah, fuck off, I understand, yes, sure, Mini Moogs are great, they're also like fucking thousands and thousands of dollars and this is like $800, so, <clears throat> or even less in other countries, so, look, this is easily one of the bassiest since I've I've owned, and I have owned Moogs, and I've said that in previous videos. Uh, it's a really nice, thick sounding synth, and it's really versatile as well. You can get some beautiful pads out of this, and which I will demonstrate right now, in fact. Why the fuck not? Um, we don't have to just do one sound. So that's, you know, that's a cool sound, whatever. There's a million things I could do with that, but let's move on to something else. So I'll just... Uh, Go back to an initial. So it's polyphonic, unless you go over here and you do, if you go to mono, you get access to all of the um, <clears throat> patch points, but you only get one voice. If you go to unison, you lose the patch points, but you get four voices stacked on top of each other. But let's just stay without the patch points so we can demonstrate a pad. So I'm going to go to the super source setting over here.
Peggio on on the uh, on the octa track. That's pretty cool. You can get some pretty rhythmic stuff. I'm just gonna really quickly um, <clears throat> put in a seek, put in an arpeggio sequence here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on mono, which means we get the patch points. And I guess I'll do a quick bit of patching, and I'll probably end it, end the video there. So here we go.
<laughs> so, I mean, you can have a lot of fun with this uh, using patch points. I feel like it really comes into its own when you have other control sources. Like, I, I actually, big revelation, I just sold my Analog 4, like, literally uh, two days ago. Um, and uh, I used to use the CV outs on the Analog 4 to control this, but it would basically just mean I would have more LFOs. And when you feed in LFOs into, like, for example, uh, I could use, I could put a LFO into the filter and therefore I wouldn't have to, I could use this LFO for something else. Um, but this LFO could no longer control the filter. So it's not like you can have two LFOs controlling the filter or anything like that. Uh, at least not as far as I'm, I'm aware. But it would mean you'd have access to another LFO so this one doesn't have to do all the work. Um, or multiple, but you, you've only got like one one input for that. So like you've sort of got to, you know, pick and choose what you want to do. Um, things like oscillator out, oscillator one and two out and rig mod in and uh, those kind of functions. You get really glitchy, nasty stuff going as I just sort of demonstrated then. Um, but it does kind of make me feel like <clears throat> maybe I'm not getting as much out of it as I could be if I had a modular setup or something. Um, but having said that, you could totally feed in audio signals into these patch points. So if you've got like a phone app or something that does like low frequency oscillators and stuff, you could probably get away with that, I reckon. Uh, I haven't tried it, so don't quote me on that. But um, but either way, that's the Roland System 1M. I haven't even looked at the plug out, um, the uh, SH-101 plug out. Like, I mean, it's, ba it's just an SH-101 and it sounds really good. I can just flick to it real quick. Um, you get access to the patch points on, on this as well, but I'll just take these out. Um, and we'll have a quick listen. Where are we? Some of the levels on this one are a little bit higher, and so it's it's maxing out the inputs on the analog on the uh, octatrack. <laughs> So I probably should have thought of this beforehand, but uh, the Octatrack does not deal well with uh, changing input levels. It does tend to peak at uh, relatively low levels, um, which is not a bad thing. Like, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I find that on the Analog 4, which is what I used to send it into the inputs of, um, that used to handle high, high levels a bit better. But you get the you get the picture. Like if I, as long any time it distorts, that's not this synth. Um, and you've only heard it happen a few times when I've maxed things out. But one thing I'll end on actually, if I can. Um... All right, so that's the initialized patch. One thing I loved about the 101 was its um, pulse width modu modulation. So I'm just gonna... Let's listen to this. Put an LFO on it.
maybe a maybe the a fraction of aliasing on that real high resonance there. Um, and it's too bassy for its own good, so of course it maxes out the inputs. So yeah, um, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. Uh, I might do another video later because I feel like it's just hard to demonstrate something like this, which is quite deep, and you never feel like you could, you know, you could just sort of go off in a whole bunch of different directions with it. I haven't even touched the alternate waves um, on these oscillators. I've just been using basic waves. There's a whole other bank of them, which are quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I guess there'll be a part two. Um, maybe we'll look more in, in more depth. And I'll probably feed it directly in this time rather than through the Octatrack. <laughs> Not that it's too bad. Like, I feel like that's a pretty good demonstration of the sound. I just feel like the Octatrack's inputs are a little bit fussy with how much uh, heat they can take. And it starts to crackle a little bit sometimes. And rest assured, this synth, I don't think I've ever heard it crackle unless it's maxing something out because it's so fucking full on. Um, but that's okay. That's what it's made for. So yeah, uh, subscribe. Uh, make uh, you know write comments if you've got something to say to me um, about the things I do, positive or negative. I'm, I'm that way. I'll, I'll listen to fucking both. Um, but yeah, uh, like my channel, all that sort of shit. Um, all right, thanks. See you later.